All right, well, Daily Cost said, I find the idea that a woman could have been made to drink poison because her husband was jealous, absolutely repulsive. And he declares that an abortion occurred. We read the passage, which we did down here, and found not a case whatsoever. He completely misread it. And here are the verses. Completely misread it. If she was guilty, she, because of God's in superintendent supernaturally uh, causing her, because she was guilty, and she declared that herself, uh, thinking that she was she an infidel and unfaithful, she was unfaithful, she would not have children. Her abdomen would swell and her thigh would waste away in the sense that she wouldn't be able to have children. That was a very, very uh, important thing, significant in those days especially, because the, the number of children you had was very, very, very important in those days, much more important than now. Now we just kill the baby if it's not convenient, and it brings a curse. But the problem is, in number, uh, Numbers 5.31, this is where we left off. Moreover, the man will be free from guilt, but that woman shall bear her guilt if she's guilty. So when a, uh, this is the law of jealousy. When a wife being under the authority of her husband goes astray, actually goes astray and is guilty of infidelity and defiles herself. Now, you, don't, you, you, you spoke www.cost, right? right Daily.cost. You spoke of consent. Okay, the, the wife consented to have adultery with another man. And that's okay? Really? Suppose you get a child, not knowing any better, under the influence of a Roman Catholic priest, and there was consensual sex, but the kid didn't know any better. Is that okay? Really? That's why you don't look to man. You look to God. Some things are beyond comprehension because of your own sinful, evil desires. And you kind of like go along and side with those things that are of your desirous nature. But you look to God and you say, no, I better control that because God says it's wrong. And eventually there's a, there's a price to pay in this life, in this temporal life. All kinds of things will come up and God won't protect you. So don't okay evil because it's within your own framework of experience. That's why man's tradition and reasoning and experience cannot be allowed in how God operates his world, his creation. And it'll all be fixed when Christ comes again. So, take a look at Bible Knowledge Commentary. You don't like my point of view. Well, what about the entire group of people that wrote this Bible Knowledge Commentary? It's a pretty trustworthy commentary. You have to just double check it. The accusation of adultery. There is no abortion here. In the covenant community of Israel, adultery, like ceremonial uncleanness and trespass against one's brother or sister, was symptomatic of unfaithfulness to the Lord. It therefore could not be tolerated as either a breach of the relationship of husband and wife or as an, the expression of covenant infidelity. Notice, no traditions. Mankind is out of it. It's all about what God has said. He's creator. If a man suspected his wife of adultery, he was to take her before the priest, whether he has proof or not. Since adultery also is a sin against God, the appropriate offering of barley flour was to be taken to the priest and offered before the Lord. The purpose of the offering was to draw attention to guilt. How this was done is explained in the next uh, verses. To, to start the ritual for ascertaining guilt, the priest presented the woman before the Lord, before the tabernacle, took water, specially blessed, or set it apart for such cases, and mixed it with dust on the tabernacle floor. And he then loosened the woman's hair and placed the barley offering in her hands, and while he held the water jar in his hands. Though the scene so far suggests the magical procedures of pagan trials by ordeal, magic itself is expressly forbidden in the Old Testament. But God's supernatural superintending is there. So this ordeal ritual must be understood in terms of the symbolical value of its elements. The barley represents the offering appropriate to judgment, especially since it was not to be mixed with oil or incense. The water mixed with dust was holy, because it was in a holy vessel, perhaps the bronze basin. The dissolving of the dust in the water may well relate to the eating of the dust by the serpent who had been cursed by the Lord in the Garden of Eden. If the accused woman proved to be guilty, if the approved accused woman proved to be guilty, she, like the serpent, could expect the curse of God as well. God's supernatural superintending. The loosening of her hair, while not a token of her immorality, because it hadn't been proved yet, since it hasn't been proved, nevertheless reflects the seriousness of the accusation and the presumptive guilt 
attested by the husband's feelings of jealousy. Let's check, test this out. When all was ready, the priest told the woman she would not be cursed if she were innocent, not poisoned, but would be cursed if guilty. She was to reply, so be it. If she was guiltless, no ill effect, harm would follow her drinking of the bitter water, the water mixed with dust. If she was guilty, on the other hand, her guilt would be manifest by the wasting away of her thigh and the swelling of her abdomen. The curse clearly refers to some physical disorder which would render the woman sterile. After the woman had taken the oath, the ink with which the curses were written was rinsed off the scroll and into the jar of dust and water. That is, the woman must now symbolically eat her words. She then was to drink the potion while, she, while the priest offered the barley to the, to the Lord. If guilty, she suffered the penalty of the curse. If innocent, she came through unharmed with her childbearing capacity fully intact. In either case, the husband was absolved of guilt, for if the wife was innocent, he had acted only because he had been affected by a feeling of jealousy over which he had no control. The physical manifestations of guilt were not inherent in the properties of the liquid mixture itself, or, as stated earlier, could they be attributed to magic? More likely, it was a matter of a psychosomatic reaction caused by genuine guilt or innocence, a reaction prompted by one's conscience and the convicting work of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> you know, we go to court on infidelity things all the time. Are you against that too? Because it was consensual sex at the moment? So you can say, well, I really wanted to have her, her to have sex with her, and, I, and, and she, she, I know I'm married, and she's married, but we have, was consulting adults. How far does that go? Daily Cost says, Nor do I think we should try to impose rules for a 5,000-year-old the the theocracy on modern people. Why? We're still doing the same evil things. People haven't changed that much. Clothes they wear, technology there, but they still do the same evil things. <clears throat> Bible study manuals. What makes you think that people today are acting so godly and so differently from peoples of ancient times that you can change what God has written because you have determined without evidence that God's word is flawed and not relevant for today? You just totally misread Numbers 5. Have you determined that it is no longer applicable without a thorough <coughs> and careful investigation and proper reading in accordance with the normative rules of language, context, and logic that you were taught in grammar school? You're not even reading anything properly. You're taking, leaving stuff out. Actually, it is evident from a careful reading that the 66 books of the Bible are applicable in many significant ways for peoples of all ages stressing his ways and not your ways from the beginning and for people of all ages. Adam and Eve were expelled from the Garden of Eden for not doing what God commanded them to do. Their rebellion infected the whole human race except for one single human being. Who do you think that was <clears throat> and still is? I'll leave you to discover who that human is. And I pray that you will endeavor to read God's word properly and stop trying to be God. And by the way, were the New Testament letters which were written in the first century for the benefit of that 5,000-year-old theocracy or the peoples that lived before Abraham? <clears throat> by the way, the Jews didn't, weren't in the Garden of Eden. They came long after Abraham, 480 years afterwards. Or for those living from the first century on, is the church a part of that 5,000-year-old theocracy? You're making statements that are absolutely absurd. Yet at the same time, does not the New Testament endorse the basics of the faith that the Old Testament did? Because people haven't changed, albeit restated in the commands of the epistles. How come so many quotations and corroborations from the Old in the New Testament? Wow, do you not know anything about this context and the Bible, and yet you claim it is number one that you affirm? <clears throat> Delicas. The only reason to study the scripture, oh, you're studying it, really, is to understand the context of the ancient Jewish people whose religion inspired and laid the foundation for ours. <clears throat> wow. Further than that, I am of the opinion that Christians should be in communication with rabbinical Judaism because they are, there are centuries of writings kept by that community that could enrich our understanding of ancient scripture. You haven't read any of it, but you think there would enrich you. Let's see. God's word declared the reasons to study scripture. So you disagree with God, and here they are. 2 Timothy 3, 16 to 17, for example, all scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching. For what benefit? For reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that a man of God may be adequate, equipped for every 
good work. Now, the problem with that is you didn't say anything like that. You've got your own agenda, man's reasoning and tradition and experience, really. That's to be corrected by the Word of God, not enhanced. You want to do evil? Go read 2 Timothy 3, 16 to 17. That okay is all the evil you want to do? Really? And these words presume you who read and obey them first is the man of God, one who has trusted alone in Jesus Christ's propitiation for the sins of the whole world in order to become a child of God, man of God, born of God into the family of God. I don't think you've done that. If you have, shame on you. That's even worse. You're a Christian that's acting like you were before you became a believer. Compare John 1, 12 to 13. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. Have you done that? Furthermore, your words to understand the context of the ancient Jewish people. Oops. To understand the context of the ancient Jewish people whose religion inspired and laid the foundation for ours. Wow. Further than that, I am of the opinion that Christians should be in communication with rabbinical Judaism <clears throat> because there are centuries of writings kept by that community that could enrich our understanding of ancient scripture. Why don't you read Mein Kampf by Hitler or Karl Marx's work on communism? Well, that, that's been around a while. Are not, these are not given as reasons for reading scripture, by the way, in order to inspire, emulate, and to lay the foundation for others that followed such as those of the church. The context of the ancient Jewish people tells a story in the Old and New Testaments of complete and utter failure. The context of the ancient Jewish people, the rabbinical traditions, tells us a story in all the New Testaments of complete and utter failure of Israel to study scripture, believe it, and obey it, throughout the entire Bible. This includes the record of rabbinical Judaism because there are centuries of writings kept by that community that could, really, I scratch that out, would not enrich our understanding of ancient scripture. It goes completely against it. I'm going to read something from Isaiah on another subject of YouTube that talks about how they misinterpreted that chapter completely and changed the word from suffering servant to Israel. You can't rewrite something but would rather largely contradict, contradict these rabbinical Judaism uh, writings. A shameful account of a chosen people who no longer are God's chosen people until a future generation of Israelites whom God will see to it all believe in their own volition of the Savior Jesus Christ and are then transformed into perfect long-lived mortal beings will then know the word of God perfectly and become priests who will co-rule with Christ over the nations of the world forever. Why isn't Israel today, and for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, not God's chosen people any longer until that future generation comes? Do you think the rabbinical writings during these periods of time are applicable? He says, you're not my chosen people. You don't even understand the word of God. You haven't turned back to me to be uh, the, the, the God of your people. So you denied the God of your people of the Bible. And in all these rabbinical uh, writings are of value to you? You think, yes, you're getting into the same camp. You're both as rebellious as one as the other. Well, Daily Cost continues. That being said, wow, that was a lot to say. I do not believe that Scripture is holy. Wow, so God isn't holy. God produced, inspired the Scripture to be written. He's not holy either? I don't believe that it is perfect. I do not believe that it is free from errors. I believe, in the words of the founder of my particular sect of Christianity, John Wesley, that scripture is sufficient. The Bible is sufficient. Of course, you don't tell me, sufficient for what? You know, some people are serial killers, and that to them is sufficient. They got weapons and a strangling grot, and they go strangle people. That's sufficient for him. What's the Bible for? The Bible is sufficient for what? You're talking about evil. You're talking about all kinds of men's traditions and experiences and, and uh, mental framework, and that's, uh, that the Bible is sufficient for encouraging that. And the Bible says what comes out of man is nothing but evil. The Bible is sufficient for man's evil, encouraging it. Wow. What you believe is not necessarily true. Evidence is required for that. Name one error, prove your case, and stop twisting and editing the Bible and redefining the meaning of words. 
Just observe and report like an honest reader should. Then tell me what you think the Bible is sufficient for if it is incomprehensible, esoteric, strictly...